true to its word, difficult questions, we have some some difficult questions. We recognize that the first service too. It was yeah, uh, <laughs> went a little over time, but um, we got some new ones here too. So let's dig into that if I can find them again. All right. You mentioned that God sometimes allows our problems to get worse before they get better in order to fix them more permanently. Kay. But then does God always fix our problems? Uh, yes and no. Um, yes, he will ultimately fix all of our problems the way he fixes all of the universe's problems at the end of of, of the age, if you will, when he ultimately restores the earth and humanity back to himself. Until that point, uh, he does not fix all of our problems. Um, some Sometimes our problems we will carry on to the day we die. Um, so yes and no, that ultimately there is coming a day when everything will be fixed and solved. But that does not I mean, all of your problems are going to be fixed in your life. They probably won't be. Um, but it's coming a day where it will happen. I keep repeating myself, but <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> no, all good. Um, you know, I would add with that, whoever, whoever might be wrestling with that question, that's really kind of a, it's a relational issue, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like it's, it's God working with us. So it requires a bit of like spiritual direction there. And if you are wrestling with that, you know, it's, it's you need to lean into here, maybe why is God not? solving my problems why is he choosing to let this linger there's a purpose so you know talk to ben or myself uh, or another uh, trusted uh believer in your life to help you kind of hear god what god might be saying to you and encourage that and do that together as a community well in verse six ben it says that israel gathered at mizpah and they drew water from a well and poured it out that sounds a lot like the phrase jesus poured out his life for us but can you explain what the purpose is of this pouring out of water? Yeah, uh, it's coupled with the fact that Israel fasted. Um, and okay. it was fasting, if you're unaware, it's, it's choosing to go apart from a physical need to show like, um, like your, your attention and your heart before God. And so we see this happen in the Bible m multiple times. Um, bad circumstances, good circumstances, where people choose to go without food. Um, as uh, and dedicate the time that they use to eating to prayer and relationing relationship with God. So this is just coupled with that, that instead of taking the water out of the well and drinking it, which is what you normally do, it was a symbol of their contrition before God. They, instead of drinking the water, they then poured it out uh, to show God how serious they were about their repentance and confession of their sin. Great. Thank you. But we had a couple questions uh, regarding kind of the same thing. So here's one of them. And there's another person who asked, uh, I think, well, a question that if we answered, it would be kind of the same answer. So are there other reasons that God has for bringing about a dry spell apart from unconfessed sin? Yes. I really like that question because it, uh, m the whole premise of my message today was about dry spells caused by sin. But there are dry spells spiritually in our lives that are not caused by sin. Um, we see, I would say, Job was going through a dry spell um, in his life, and yet he kind of keeps saying, like, I didn't do anything. Like, why is this happening? And so I think that uh, we can definitely go through those dry spells in our lives for more reasons than just sin. But I do believe that when we are going through the dry spell, the first thing we probably should be asking is, is there unconfessed sin? And if the answer to that is no, there's not, then we can begin trying to figure out what is going on. Yeah, that, that's like the dangerous one. You want to check that yeah. kind of first. Kind of like when the lights start going off in your car and it's like, it's a check engine light going. I have to make sure I see what that is before I just guess that it's maybe a glitch in the electrical. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm not a mechanic, so don't take my word for it. Maybe. But anyways, but thank you. Yeah, definitely check that first. Now, you'd mentioned uh, how God had told them to remove the bales and ash tourettes from their lives. Now, that, you know, for a lot of us, if we're not coming from maybe like one religion to another, which yeah. is kind of the context, right? Uh, the religion of the 
neighboring kingdoms with themselves. If we don't have like another religion, so to speak, how does that make sense for us? Yeah. Males and asterisks for today. Sure. Maybe. Most of us aren't a part of a creepy sex cult. So <laughs> how, does this, yeah, yeah. how does this, you know, tie in? Uh, I think, well, notice well, as I was talking about this in, in the story, I kept referring to it as cultural deity. Um, and it was just the gods of the nations around Israel that, that they kind of got sucked into uh, just in their culture. And I think we can relate to that, that we have cultural deities in our world today. I think uh, the idea of pleasure is a huge cultural deity in our world. I think entertainment is one that can quickly uh, s suck our relationship dry from God. Um, I think that just um, le leisure can be uh, a, a cultural God as well. We, we often refuse, sometimes we don't do the thing that we ought to do because, well, I don't want to. And so there's probably many other cultural deities as well, but I think every culture has their gods, and I think we see these kind of play out more and more in our society today. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. So, you know, I think easy for us to when we read over passages like that, that it's kind of like we don't see an immediate connection. It's like, okay, well, that's not me. Mm -hmm. And that's so dangerous. So thank you for taking us a bit deeper on that. I love the concept of the Ebenezer. That was really interesting. Um, so I was wondering if you had some other insights on how we can incorporate that concept into our lives today. Uh, good question. Um, yeah, I think there's a few. Um, I, I was I told this the first hour, but when I was student pastor at a church, we had like a, a winter retreat for our team. And uh, at the end of the, the retreat, we did like a dedication time where if God was stirring in your heart to make a decision. Um, we had rocks, literal rocks down front. You come up, kind of right on that. You remember that, babe? And so then you just take the rock home and uh, set it somewhere where you'd remember it. You're still going to remember it. But I think there's a lot of different ways you can incorporate an Ebenezer into your life. One of our Ebenezers is we have a big uh, painting, Morgan did, uh, and it's a, script, it's a painting of scripture on our wall. And so we have that up. That's an Ebenezer in our life. Um, it could be, I don't know, a tattoo. It could be uh, maybe you like to just paint. I was talking to Philip from the first hour, and he's uh, this year done, doing a lot with painting. And he was talking about this kind of significance and symbolism there. So I think there's a lot of different ways. I've heard uh, my old pastor's wife, um, for her, it was uh, a specific song like that came on the radio. And every single time she heard that song, it was just like that reminder of God's goodness in her life. For a while, for Alyssa, it was every time we saw a train. Uh, it's just a reminder of God's goodness and grace. My, li my wife loves trains. Um, I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> True. So there can be a lot of different Ebenezers uh, in our life. Um, and so I would say pray about it. And if there's something that you think this would help me remember God's goodness uh, in the good times and the bad, uh, do it, sure. Yeah, thank you. That I, I know in, in my life I've been trying the past few months to really incorporate that more in my life. I find it's so important if we forget the, th the lessons that God has taught us, mm -hmm. uh, the things that he's brought us through, we're so much more at risk of repeating those past mistakes. Yeah. You know, when our lives are so much, tr you know, bent around being transformed by God, we don't really want to have to keep going through the same thing over and over again, you know? Yeah, so sure. uh, so uh, for the last question on the, on the docket here, and it's probably the, I say the toughest one, the one we might wrestle with the most, um, we know that God is a God of love uh -huh. and a God of mercy. Yep. So how can we make sense of God participating in this battle Clearly on one side, particularly sure. in which people, real people, are losing their lives. Yeah. How that's does that make sense? That's a great question. Um, and so good, I'm going to let Stephen Perino answer it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Me and Stephen talk about this. Steve, we talk about this a lot. Um, and it's true. It's one that, like, the Old Testament, you have to really wrestle with as you read the Old Testament. Because you see, like, some pretty crazy stuff that happens. And r real people dying. And so how do we make sense of it all? Um, and so for me, I think there's a couple of things I would say to this. We talked about God's love and God's mercy. But along with that, it is balanced with God's justice. God is a just God, and God is sovereign. 
And so we understand that ultimately the moment mankind rebelled from God, each and every one of us are part of that rebellion from God. And so as a result, like at that moment, we deserve God's wrath to be poured out on, on our lives. There, At that point, he could have just wiped us off the map. He chose not to. And so um, as we look at moments where we see God's wrath poured out in the Old Testament, we can also remember that like what we see in the overarching story of the biblical narrative is God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy. But we are allowed brief glimpses of God's wrath. But God is completely just in doing so. And so in these moments where we, ha- where we see kind of the ugliness of justice, it is just, but it's by God's grace, we don't see it a whole lot more. Um, and so that's how I would answer it. Cody, what do you think? Well, I was going to say something entirely uh, different than giving an answer. Um, but I, I think, you know, I'd agree with, with all the things that you've said there. You know, that would we want to follow a God who doesn't stand up to evil? Mm-hmm. That's kind of the question that when I see these things, I think, well, you know, if there's evil in the world and God didn't you know, fight against it, then I guess he's not really a God of love and he's not maybe really a God that I want in my life. Um, and that's what I, I often know that, you know, that we're it's Israel's not on the opposing side because of his grace mm-hmm. towards them. That's the only thing that gets them through. And the same with us. So I think it's always essential to, fo- to, to keep in mind. You know, and I think in a, on a bigger scope, we want to seek and know who God is. And we come to know him through the relationship that we have through Jesus. It's through faith. But then there's so many things that we have to wrestle with, things that we come across in Scripture like this. And I think a lot of people maybe are afraid of that, and they don't want to face those things. And I'm really happy to have questions come up like this because it's okay that we have doubts. It's okay that we have questions and that we might struggle with understanding and not always have an answer right away. Mm -hmm. You know, this is part of the journey of faith. What it is is we keep our, our relationship with God strong and we keep seeking after him and knowing and trusting that, you know, we don't have the whole picture. It's okay right now. And that as time goes on, as we get more and more uh, close with him and he re- reveals more and more of himself to us, those things will come. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I don't want people to feel like they're ashamed, feel like, oh, if they don't get it, that they're bad Christians or bad believers or yeah. if they don't, under- it doesn't all make sense to them that they just have to just give up on the whole thing. Yeah. You know, those aren't the right answers. But, you know, we, we kind of go through this journey of discovery as a community. So, you know, I'll encourage you guys more and more. And that's part of what the question time is for. It's like, hey, I don't get this. Let's talk about it. And if you know, we don't get an answer right away, let's keep going that day in, day out through our, our time together here as a, as a church. Yeah. yeah, and I would say that sometimes our answer is going to be, you know what, we struggle with this too. And uh, something theologians have struggled with for centuries. So, but uh, but we don't despair because we know that there is that God has a very clear answer for us. And sometimes, though, you know, it might be hard to accept. Uh, sometimes we are, as as it's human nature, to want to kind of make things kind of in our own image or what we want. And we ha- can fall into a pattern. And this is one of those areas where we can kind of want to say, "Well, this is what I want God to look like. This is what feels good for me." Mm-hmm. We don't really see how it all connects with everything else. But what's most like wrong about that really is that you know it's not for us to decide who God is when God is this great, uh, you know, perfect, powerful, almighty being. He reveals to us who He is, and it's our job to, to respond and discover. It's not the other way around. So sometimes we might have to accept things that we don't really quite doesn't make sense to us right away. Right? Yeah. Oh, the live question. Yeah, that, that brings a good point. God is spirit. And how can we make sense of that? You know, it's, it's so kind of beyond our just, you know, what we, you learn in, in school <laughs> or what we grow up knowing. So there's a, there's a mystery to God. 
and we have to we do have to embrace that aspect of things too there's a mystery to god so uh, well that's all we got here